OK, so before we get started setting up your development environment, let's go through a quick little refresher on HTTP so you know what's going on with Emoji Journal. It's very possible you're already familiar with the basics of HTTP and how it works. If so, you may want to think about skipping this video. If not, don't be afraid. I'm here to show you the basics so you can get through this video course and understand what's going to and fro throughout your entire application. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is a protocol that's built on top of TCP, which stands for Transmission Control Protocol. HTTP is a protocol which the internet uses for the transmission of most data you've used. HTTP works on a request-response basis. This means that a client can make a request to a URL, and it should always expect a response, regardless of the quality of the request. This means that HTTP operations should always leave a server stateless, which means that your server is really an orchestrator in the grand scheme of your back end. The server will take a request, order other components to do whatever the request says, and then send the appropriate response. You'll refer to your Katura server in this course as your API, or Application Programming Interface. Think of your server as the interface for your entire back end. When it comes to HTTP requests, you may have seen the acronym CRUD before. I won't try to overburden you with too many acronyms in this course, sup Vapor Team. But CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, Delete. These are the four most main operations you'll perform in HTTP, also known as POST, GET, PUT, and DELETE. Here's an example of each request. Whenever you send a GET request, you are asking to read existing data from a source. This request can often include a filter or a query string. These filters, or parameters if you will, are usually sent across the internet as part of the URL. You can usually expect the ampersand sign to indicate the separation between some of these parameters. Sending a GET request indicates that you should receive data in the manner that you are asking for it and that the data itself will not be modified in any way. Let's say a client wants to see all of the users for certain application. The client sends a GET request to the API, asking for a collection of profiles. The API receives this request, turns around to the database, and says, hey, I need to retrieve a collection of profiles from you. The database responds, hopefully politely, with a JSON collection of profiles. The API now has these profiles, and it forms a response. After it's done, it sends the response with the associated profile data back down to the client. The API stays stateless because, while it could have made a request to the database to change something, the API itself did not change at all. It washes its hands and prepares for the next request. A POST request is usually reserved for whenever you want to add an item to a source of data. This type of request usually involves adding data to the body of the request and not in the actual URL being used to make the request. This is where you have a choice in the type of data that you send with the request. In this tutorial, you'll be sending JSON, or JavaScript Object Notation, requests to your server. You won't have to worry too much about actual JSON in this course, thanks to a handy protocol introduced in Swift 4 called Codable. More on that later. An example of a POST request is when a user creates a new profile on a server for the application we previously described. The only difference is, this time, the API tells the database to create a new line in the user's database. The API will respond, saying that this has been done. You won't use this type of request too often in this course, but a PUT request is usually reserved for making an update to an existing resource. You can send data with a PUT request in the body, just like a POST, but the data you include in such a request is only what you need to update on a particular resource. Let's say that the user who just used a POST request to make their new user profile has an ID in the database of 9. The put request wouldn't include anything but the ID, which is 9, and whatever fields need to be updated, such as username or email. This is not the last kind of request you can make, but per the CRUD model, you can use a delete request to, yep, you guessed it, delete an object in your database. Just like the last two examples, if a user wanted to delete their profile, they would send a delete request, usually with just the ID. The server should take care of the rest by sending a command to the database to delete associated information about that profile and responding to the client when the work has been done. I haven't talked about what to expect out of responses yet in HTTP. Responses are standardized by a body called the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. I like to picture this as a circular table of cats sitting together making important decisions on the internet. A successful response is usually in the 200s or the 300s. For example, a 200 request literally means OK. However, something in the 400s is an issue with the request. 
You have probably heard of a 404 request response, which means not found. Anything in the 500s is an issue with the server, such as a crash or something else. Lastly, a header is what should accompany every request and response. This covers metadata that is associated with the request or response. You can think of this as data about your data. One important header that you'll work with in this course is for content type. You'll mostly be using this with application slash JSON, which means that data you send over HTTP will consist of JSON. You'll make more sense of this later. Okay, I haven't covered every single thing you need to know about HTTP, but here's hoping you now have enough to feel comfortable tackling the rest of this course. The next bit of setup we need to take care of is how to run your API in Linux. This isn't quite a Docker course, but you'll know how to test your API on Docker after the next video is done. See you there.